Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Joe Block, who is just up the coast from me in San Diego. He's up in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Joel? Hey, John, how are you? Excellent. And Joel has has helped an enormous amount of business over the, businesses over the year, and he's an expert in building businesses and venture capital and all those good things. And he has written the book, Stop Hustling Gigs and Start Building a Business. Uh, so, um, Joel, tell me about the genesis of, of why you decided to write this book. Well, you know, I, listen, I spent... Um the vast majority of my career, either in venture capital, running hedge funds, syndicating real estate. So raising money and putting deals together. And I, I built a company which I sold to a Fortune 500 company in 1995. And then I started buying and selling other companies. So I've been inside of probably a thousand companies in my career. And the best companies just seem to do certain things. They just always do. And, you know, it occurred to me, uh, having dinner with my kids uh, 10 years ago or something that I would tell them little stories or I would tell them something. I thought, you know, I really should be writing this stuff down so my kids have some kind of a collection or archive of some of my thoughts or ideas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's uh, that's kind of where the, the, the thing came from. It just came from a collection of these ideas. And so, um, and so, you know, you've been in uh, say building businesses and venture capital and all of that. And those are things when people start out as entrepreneurs, right? I mean, it's quite exciting and they set up their business, but then there comes to a point where, you know, they need money or they need investment and that then they start to enter a world that they just don't know and, and looks and seems very frightening and seems kind of clickish too. And um, always seems like you're on the, um, shall we say, the, you know, there, there's a big gap there up there and you're down here and you're kind of begging for money. Yeah. So how do you help people um, figure out, number one, their best strategy for raising money? Well, um so let, let's uh, let's split this into a couple yeah. of categories here. Um, mostly now I work in the real estate area mm -hmm. and raising money to buy real estate is a pretty specific business. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think that they want venture capital. I would tell most people that they do not want venture capital. Uh, and venture capital are the shark guys, like on the shark sure. tank, that's venture capital. Um, and those guys put money into early stage businesses uh, with lots of risk, they know there's a, a good chance it's not going to work out, but they try to get in and kind of ride the wave with these guys, and they kind of they 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 ride it so that they can have a quick exit, stock market activity. It does not happen for very many companies. It just mm -hmm. doesn't happen a lot. What you really got to do is you have to get your company to a certain place where it's ready to take off, mm -hmm. and that's probably going to be you know your friends, your family. Uh, there's crowdfunding rules that enable that to happen. So there are lots of different ways that people can do it. There's lots of good choices. Uh, it's interesting, you know, you said it sounds clickish. It absolutely is clickish. There's an inside track. Mm -hmm. and you have to connect with people that have the inside track because that's just, uh, you know, it's a very competitive business and we all compete on capital. And that's that's kind of what mm -hmm. I talk I talk about competing on capital. And that's that's where we're at. And you always tend to, I mean, people say, oh, did you see the X company raised, you know, 50 million, this company raised 30 million. But I guess we don't hear about the the thousands and thousands of other companies who, <laughs> who go through the Sandhill Mill and never raise a dime, right? No, they, they, <laughs> absolutely. And and let me tell you something: most of them don't belong there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you would do a lot better to get yourself to a place where those companies or those those venture outfits would be attracted to you. So, um, you know, there, there's a little magic to it. There's a little bit of art to it. There's a sign, a little bit of science to it. You got to do it the right way, and if you do it the right way, then it uh, it might go your way. It still might not, but it might. So, what are some of the ways that you can effectively build a business so that you can either attract money in or, or indeed become self sustaining? What are the things that you should be looking well, at? Well, put it like this: it, it ends up at the end of the day always being about revenue. It's mm -hmm. always about revenue. You have to generate revenue, even if the revenue is not that profitable at first, because everybody understands that you're plowing the revenue back to expand the base of the business, uh, you know, so it's not really always necessary for a tiny little business to be profitable because the goal isn't for the owners of the business to pull money out. The goal mm -hmm. is for them to recycle the money and keep plowing it back. Or what I like to think about is parlay. You want to parlay the money and make that money continue to do some of the work with you. So revenue is always the name of the game. It's always about selling. You know, you have to have some edge. 
And there's only certain kinds of companies. There's a, a certain kind of company that's going to end up going public, that's going to be attractive. Uh, and you have to think, is this a lifestyle business? Is this just for me and my family to have a little fun? Is this a real serious business that could go the distance? And you have to do some soul searching to, uh, to really figure those things out. Yeah, and that's probably a, a difficult thing, as you say, for, for most entrepreneurs at the beginning, because obviously when, not everybody, but a lot of people start a business with dreams of it expanding and seeing their name on the building and it getting bigger and bigger and bigger and maybe being bought out, you know, with a huge amount of money or, or as you say, going public. But you do have to make those decisions at some stage about how far you want this business to go and what are you prepared to do to get it there, right? Yeah, there's a couple of different issues. One is, are you prepared to do what it takes? Most mm -hmm. people are not prepared to do what it takes. The second thing is, is that really what they want? Right. Most people really don't want what they think they want. They, they think that they want some giant business, uh, multinational offices all over the globe with towers and their sign on the building. That's just not really what most people want. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to want that to be successful. Right. There are lots of different ways to be successful. Uh, you do need to get some clarity, though, about what it is that you want, because if you're not clear, you're never going to get anywhere because you if you don't know where you're going, you'll never get there. You know, that sort of thing. And when you say prepared to do what it takes, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, long hours, working with people that you may or may not like. It might mean giving up control of your company and letting somebody else come in and run it. Uh, you're going to be uh, taking orders from people. You think, hey, I'm the boss. But once the money comes in, the money's going to tell you what to do. Uh, you know, they're going to be lawyers, mm -hmm. accountants. You're going to be doing things that you may or may not really enjoy doing. You may think, I'm going to be in this business so I can service clients. And that's not really what the business is. The business is about moving the money. Mm -hmm. And you have to do the things that make the money move. And, and that's not always servicing clients. That means selling. That means raising money. It means dealing with Wall Street people. Uh, those are very difficult things, very cantankerous personalities from time to time. And you need mm -hmm. to uh, be able to stand up to those people and uh, be able to muscle your way in and stay in. Yeah. I like in one of the, the chapters here, you, or you have called harsh realities and you say money follows expertise. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, look, uh, in general, uh, people who are really good at things, are able to monetize those skills better than people who are kind of, uh, you know, a lot of fluff, mm -hmm. no stuff. So you really have to bring the goods to the table. And I don't care who you are, what you look like, what gender, it doesn't matter. You got to bring the goods. And if you bring the goods, the likelihood of you being successful go up dramatically. So and and it's part of it because uh, I think sometimes people uh, overlook the fundamentals of the business, like building the solid structures. And I know you that's a thing that you, you know, you outline in the book about putting all the pieces in place and maybe they run before they can walk or they try to, you know, as I say, like run after money before they have a solid business or even a solid idea of where they want to go. Well, here's what's going to happen. If you go to the money too early, mm -hmm. one of one of several things is going to happen. One, you'll be rejected, uh, which is a bummer. Mm -hmm. But here's what would be worse is for somebody to come in and say, well, you don't have much of a business here. So instead of them taking five or 10 or 20 percent when you're more mature, they're going to say, we'll take 40, 50 or 60 percent. And, and you find yourself in this very difficult situation because you really need the money. Mm -hmm. And if you really need the money because you don't have any revenue and you don't have the ability to stand on your own two feet, you're going to end up taking a deal that you may not want. And that's called dealing with the devil. You know, yeah. you, you make a deal with the devil when you don't want to. That's that could really be an unfortunate situation and you really want to avoid getting yourself in that. And the only way you can avoid that is by building out your business in stages, raise a little bit of money, go do some good, go raise a little more, go do some good, raise a little more, go do some good. And you keep raising the price slowly over time. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get to the guys who are the professional money people, uh, you're going to be in a much stronger bargaining position where they're going to say, God, we really want in on this deal. And you're the one that's calling the shots. Yeah. And you have another one called Sales Wags the Dog, not the other way around. And I think that's that's always a that's always a difficult one too, isn't it, at some stages? Because especially if you have a company and maybe uh it's maybe it's a software company and you have a lot of developers, you people who've built the product and put it together, but at the end of the day it's all driven by sales, and that can be a difficult dynamic sometimes. Listen, it's not difficult for me. I'm a mm -hmm. sales. I, I come from the CPA world, sure. by the way, mm -hmm. but I'm a salesman. I left that world to, to go into to selling, raising money as a, as a mm -hmm. selling business. 
And I, I am crystal clear, sales is in charge. Sales wags the dog, the dog doesn't wag the, the, the sale. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, to me, I am crystal clear about it because when you have money coming in, you have independence, mm -hmm. you have choices, uh, you really have the flexibility to take a deep breath and relax every once in a while. Uh, and, that, and I don't care if you have a large business or a small one, when money's coming in, when money's moving, things happen. And if money's not moving, nothing's happening. So you gotta be very careful. I always put sales ahead of everything. That's, mm -hmm. that's me. Not everybody's going to agree, but that's me. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. And then you say, um, you know, things like, um, when you're actually selling is, is, you know, sell their dream back to them, you know, sell to the other side of the river. Um, to talk us through some of those well, these are these are my selling philosophies. I mean, when I sell, you know, I'll say to somebody, uh, you know, so what do you what do you imagine your dream, you know, your your life would be like? You know, if you could accomplish this thing, what would it be like? And they'll tell you what what it'll be like. You ask them questions, and you say, well, listen, you know, that's the other side of the river. That the, mm -hmm. the other side of the river is their goal. It's what they want to accomplish. Uh, they're not buying the other side of the river. I mean, I mean, that's what they want. Yeah. But they have, but that's not what they're paying for because you can't really deliver that to them. What you what they're paying for are the stepping stones that get them to the other side of the river. So you really want to take what it is that they want to accomplish and then help them understand how you can help them to get there and how you can make something happen for them. And that is really all about taking them to the other side of the river. And they'll buy the stepping stones that you offer to them if they believe that you're going to get them to their goal environment, which is the other side of the river. The other thing is you got to draw a line to the money. You have mm -hmm. to show them that you know, they're going to get 200 grand and it's going to cost them 20 grand, let's say, to get it. Right. So they're going to get 10 times more than you, which is exactly what should happen. They, It's not an even trade. If it was an even trade, no one would ever do it. Sure. They need to get much more than you, but you need to show them, hey, listen, I'm going to charge you just a small amount and you're going to get a lot of benefit from that happening. And, you know, they're saying, well, there's a little risk to that. Well, then that's your job is to convince them that you know what you're doing. You've been successful. This isn't your first time uh you know, making it happen. You've done it a thousand times before. And those, that's why money follows expertise is the more expert you are, the more likely people are to say yes. No, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think that's the, uh, I think sometimes, you know, people sell to the step, as you say, and sell, sell, you know, figure out what the goal is, the other side of the river, and then come back and sell the steps, you know, rather than yeah. try to sell the steps before you've figured out where those steps are yeah. going. The thing is that, you know, it's what people buy is the other side of the river, but mm -hmm. what they pay for yeah. are the stepping stones. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to think about it just exactly that way. I mean, it's, it's a strong metaphor. I mean, it's, it's the way that I think I lay these things out this way, but people really kind of get it, especially salespeople. They really need to think about this. And, you know, when I keynote and I talk to audiences, you know, I, exp I explain these kinds of topics to them and they, it really goes a long way for them. Yeah, and I love the, the the prospecting piece here. Looking for left-handed plumbers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know that's why I had to write all this stuff down for my kids because there's just a lot of fun stuff in here. But you know, if you go to a little party mm -hmm. and you know, a network function and somebody says, "So what do you do?" Well, I'm, I'm I'm an accountant. Do you have any clients for me? Does anybody, you know anybody that needs an accountant? Well, everybody needs an accountant. Sure, sure. I mean, I mean everybody does. So that's really not helpful. And my experience is that. People have a hard time going from very general to very specific. They mm -hmm. have a much easier time going from very specific to general. Yeah. So if I said, do you name every restaurant in your town? You, you couldn't do it. But I yeah. said, name all the Chinese ones. You could probably name all the Chinese ones. Right. Well, how about the Mexican ones? And how about the Italian ones? Mm -hmm. And how about the whatever? You know, if you do it like that. So what you got to say to somebody where when you're at a networking function, you don't say I'm an accountant, you know, uh, and, and do you have any clients? They'll say, well, what kind of clients? And you say, well, very, very specific. I want left-handed plumbers, not just plumbers, <laughs> left-handed ones. Do you know any of those? And they're saying, uh, no, I, I don't know any of those, but I, I know some right-handed plumbers. Can you <laughs> right -handed? No, for real, this is really how it works. Yeah. And, and, you know, and they'll go, well, yeah, well, yeah, I do know this one right-handed guy, plumber. Uh, but actually, uh, I, I know a whole bunch of fencing contractors, you know, can you work? How about fencing contractors? Right. Well, you know, fencing contractors and plumbers, they're both contractors. They're very mm -hmm. similar. Uh, I could work with those too. So if you help them get very specific and, and generalized from there, uh, life gets a lot easier. And, and you'll find that when you're very specific, and the reason a lot of entrepreneurs don't do that is they're afraid, well, gee, there might be some plumber that I don't get or there's some client I don't get uh, when, you, uh, when you're too specific. But the truth is, 
that if you apply, if you appeal to uh, everyone, you appeal to no one. You know, you can't be for everyone. We all have to kind of pick a lane. Yeah, and I think that's a. I, you raise a, f- a fantastic point there. And by the way, I love that specific, and that one is now in, in burned into my brain. I'll be looking for left-handed plumbers after this. But, <laughs> um, I like that idea, but I like I like the thing is, yeah, I can. Th- I think the temptation is always, especially when you're small and you're trying to grow, is just to be as broad as you can. You know, just and and, and kind of take a scattergun approach and chase after everything. Rather than, as you say, is gets go from specific and work out from there, because I think that's kind of counterintuitive in in many ways to the way people think. <clears throat> it's completely counterintuitive. Uh, it's backwards of how people think. They think that if you uh, if you don't uh, tell every if you don't cast a wide net, you won't catch any fish. But mm-hmm. the truth is. Uh, it becomes completely unmanageable and then you can't put your your story out to the right people and nobody finds out who you are and it just it ends up being a big mess. So you really want to be as very specific, very narrow as possible. And by doing that, you're going to be a lot more successful. And, you know, the most important message that I convey is is really you got to get yourself onto the inside track. Mm-hmm. The inside track is the best, smartest and fastest way to get things done. And And there are some people that just have the inside track on things and uh, and this is the inside track to being successful in selling is be very specific, look for very specific kinds of things, you know, sell the other side of the river. I mean, these are the kinds of things that really help people to explode their careers. I mean, I've been inside of more than a thousand companies mm-hmm. and these are the things that the best people do. Yeah, that's fun. And I just want to ask you one more before we run out of time is, uh, Choose clients that are easy to find because everybody would say, wow, that's great. I'd, we'd love to do that. But what do you mean by that? Well, you know, um, I, I think that, you know, this is one of those situations where you don't want to find people that are hiding in the bushes. So, you know, you don't want to look for for such esoteric and unusual things that there are very few of them around. Right. You, you want to apply your skills to groups of people that are large enough that mm-hmm. there's a, an audience for you. And and that that's not everybody. I and mean, by the way, you got to make sure that there's sure. enough people out there in the marketplace that can buy your services. And if there's not, then you're then you're not it doesn't listen, there's a lot of left-handed plumbers out there. So left, you know, we can make a joke about left-handed plumbers, but there's a lot of left-handed plumbers. Mm-hmm. Right. That could be somebody's business. Really it could. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but uh, you know, left-handed plumbers that have a certain freckle in a certain place and <laughs> And a bump on their nose, yeah. that might be a little hard to find. So we don't yeah. like, we don't want to. There's a little balance between yeah. being specific and being crazy. Yeah, exactly. So there's there's niches and there's niches, right? Yeah, yeah. there's right, niches right. that have a you know that could sustain your business, and there's niches that couldn't sustain anything, right? Yeah, because there because there's like there's one person there. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Joel, this has been uh, this has been fascinating. Um, uh, you know, a lot of great stuff that you covered there about you know making sure that you have an edge. Um, being selective about where you go, looking for money. It's, you know, VCs aren't aren't right for everybody. Private equity isn't right for everybody. Sometimes friends and families and other uh, and other things are are better route to go. Revenue is the key. Put everything in. Put everything into sales. And um, when you're out there prospecting, be very specific, and then go yeah. from specific yeah. to broad. And when your salespeople are out there, remember to find out what's on the other side of the river, and then sell the stepping stones. There you go. Hey, that, 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 that was a great distillation. Thank you for doing <laughs> Thank that. You. And before we go, I'd uh, just like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do and how they can find out more about you. Well, listen, I, I run I run a hedge fund. So that means investors give me their money and then we go buy assets with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and I speak uh, professionally to audiences. I, I speak to corporate audiences. Uh, twice a year, we do a, a syndication hedge fund symposium where we teach uh pretty high level real estate investors, how to raise uh, funds and how to set up hedge funds and so forth. So, uh, but the keynote business is really awesome. We have some mastermind groups and uh, we support, uh, you know, mid-level uh, exec, you know, well, senior level executives in mid-sized companies right. really uh, on, on a lot of their growth initiatives. That's the kind of thing that we do. And we talk about leadership, we talk about selling and we talk about really that a, what a CEO or the management team has to do is use all the different kinds of tools at their disposal. And every one of those kinds of tools we think of as capital. So because we teach people to compete on capital with all the tools they have at their disposal, and then they got to take the inside track. And they can find me at joelblock.com. 
joeblock.com that's great listen joe block the book is stop hustling gigs and start building a business 101 plus tricks of the trade to help entrepreneurs and self-employed people build a money making machine and i said that in one breath that's uh, pretty good too by the way <laughs> <laughs> my name is john golden says pop online says magazine pipeline crm see you all for another expert interview really soon thank you